Welcome back for some more football content brought to you by WUVA Sports. I'm Rob Denny, joined by my friend and colleague Ian Greenberg. We're here to talk about the Saturday, September 14th matchup between your UVA Cavaliers and the Florida State Seminoles. Now, it's been a while since we've had such high expectations for the Hoos versus this ACC opponent. What is your thoughts here? Vegas has us up by a touchdown plus. I'm feeling good. I don't think either of us would pick against the Cavaliers right now, but what are some things that you've got your eye on looking at the Seminoles team? So looking at the Seminoles, I'm definitely looking first at they're getting off to a hot start. Last week they scored in their first three possessions of the game, and then after that their offense stalled. Through the first two weeks of the season, they've been they've been outscored 48 to 14 in the second half of games. And so that's something I think that's gonna become a huge factor. UVA, on the other hand, has outscored their opponents 31 to 17, and the 17 points they gave up were with their backups last week versus William and Mary. And UVA's starting defensive unit has been absolutely stifling. As you mentioned, most of the points allowed this season came in the form of substitutes playing against William and Mary in the second half of a blowout game. I'm excited to see the Scott Stadium crowd though because I think that's going to play a big role, this home field advantage with a lockdown defense that's shown a lot more strength up front, I think, this season than in the past It's preventing the run game from becoming problematic and forcing James Blackman to make some tough throws early on. I'm not even sure if FSU gets that momentum going in the first half. And now we do know that they have a strong running game, and our defensive front group is going to have to put up a strong fight against that. Now, we haven't seen really an effective running game yet this season. What do you think we're going to have to keep an eye on with this FSU running attack? Well, I think definitely you have to start with Cam Akers. Um, last week, he was keeping their offense afloat, 36 carries, 193 yards, and two touchdowns. Clearly, he's someone you have to watch for. But I think UVA's defensive front has shown they're capable. You know, So far this season, they're 19th in the nation, allowing only 2.2 yards per game. So I think it's definitely going to come down to packing the box, stopping Cam Akers and making James Blackman, as you said, make those throws, and he hasn't shown he's been able to do it so far. From the who side, though, who is it that you think maybe you've got your eye on? What, what are we going to look to see from the offensive unit, perhaps, in this one? I think the breakout star of last week, Joe Reed. I think you saw it in the um, special teams, and you saw it as a receiver. He was just explosive all around. Um, so I think I want to see him continue to grow and become that option, maybe that even number one option at wide receiver. Right now you can still say Dubois is the number one guy, but Joe Reed is someone who you definitely have to keep an eye out for and he's explosive all over the field. There's a much better chance of navigating a tough defense when you've got playmakers all the way through the depth chart. And one place where I'm really excited to see that, in addition to seeing a little bit more of that at the receiver position, is in the running game. Because the UVA running game is just incredible when you think about it. Bryce Perkins leads the team in rushing yards. He's got the most attempts. He's averaging 4.5 yards per carry as the quarterback. And then on top of that, three different running backs through two games right now are averaging a minimum 5.8 yards per carry. Wayne Talapapa scratched from the last game with that injury, didn't get to play against William and Mary, but we saw PK Kyer in both games. And we saw Mike Hollins take the world by storm a little bit versus William and Mary. How incredible is it that not one, not two, not three threats on the ground game. UVA has three bona fide running backs, including the biggest dual threat quarterback in the ACC. That's going to give a lot of defenses a lot of headaches. And defensive coordinators, they better be losing some sleep, starting with FSU. Well, I just think it's a testament to Bronco what he's built so far. You know, they've established themselves as a run first team. But as you said, with Dubois and Reed, not just running. You know, they have the threats at the running back, but they can also throw the ball. And I think it's made their offense, as we've seen so far this season, much more explosive than we've seen in the past. And I think for Florida State, that could be a very big issue, seeing how they give up points. Got to imagine we might be a little bit tired of her. We'll at least have memorized the good old song. I think we'll be hearing a lot this weekend, seeing how Florida State's defense is and how our offense has expanded. We'll hear it a lot. No doubt about that. And we'll see you hopefully Saturday, September 14th at 7.30 p.m. to watch the UVA Cavaliers take on the Florida State Seminoles live at Scott Stadium.